Okay, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to present uh, VCP. My name is Ronnie Moyal. I'm the, the VP of Sales for the Americas for uh, Virtuoso. Uh, VCP is our product, our alternative to vCenter, which will allow you easy, um, easy delivery of um, services over uh, VMware stack. Um, with that, we will start um, with the introductions. So with me on the call and uh, the person that will drive the uh, the uh, session, the discussion and the Q&A uh, at the end of the session is Mike. Uh, Mike, you wanna take it from here? Yeah, sure. Um, so we are gonna go over, we're gonna talk a little bit about challenges. Um, is more VMware the answer within this? Uh, virtuoso solutions. We're going to talk. We're going to show some customer uh, customer examples and and scenarios. Uh, we're going to do a quick demo, and we're going to do a Q and A at the end so that we can get more into it. So let's uh, go ahead and let's dive into this. Um, today it's all about automation of uh, VMware, um, and we say that we talk about automation, but it's really about efficiencies. How do we? How do we get the most out of our infrastructure and our stack? We need to understand some basics of automation, allow customers and um, the, the ability to come in and do certain tasks. Um, we look at recent trends. So if you can look at the, the, the um, graph here, we look at the trend and um, it's talking about um, inflation and what inflation has done um, to the market. Um, we we got to find ways to maximize the efficiencies within here because we know energy costs going up, software is going up. But on the antithesis of that, we have hardware availability, uh, delivery, timing. Uh, it's all about um, those aspects within um, the environment and price expectation, expectations and margins uh, for you and, and your customers. So as we look at that, we want to make sure that we're we're addressing some of these things, okay. especially in the world of VMware. Um, even as relevant as yesterday, announcements are coming. Uh, we all have heard and, and dealt with um, some. Some of you may have dealt with the uh, recent changes within VMware as it's, as it's been spun out. Um, there was the announcement of the uh, acquisition from Broadcom um, caused uh, a few individuals uh, that I have personally have talked to um, just to kind of look and we'll see what's out there. They want to see what's on the horizon because knowing historically what uh, Broadcom has done uh, to, to uh, software um, concerned individuals. And that being said, the, the acquisition has gone through and there's been announcements different various announcements and there's statistics around and, and interviews around and predictions around this um, plan uh, you know the plan for VMware is to convert 60 percent of VMware's current perpetual to subscription that it was announced yesterday this slide was previously put but this that was announced yesterday um, Gartner or Forrester has actually predicted 20% of VMware enterprise customers will escape the VMware stack. Now, that may be something you're looking at, maybe something you're dealing with. Um, that, is, that is the reason why we're here. VMware has some challenges. They're, they're the most known. They're the, they are the most powerful virtualization solution. But in a typical environment, it is not designed for efficiencies, automated cloud experience that everyone expect, expects. We have, you know, the Azure, the uh, AWS, and they've built on these automation, simplistic user interfaces for people to consume and, and utilize theirs. So there's drawbacks with VMware for enterprise, for MSPs, for cloud infrastructure customers. So if we look at VMware, there is really no cloud experience in a traditional um, environment uh, or setup. No white label, slow to make changes, a lot of manual, 
customer churn, lack of automation. Mostly it's the infrastructure team that is doing a lot of this. Now there's, there's scripting and pieces that you can do out of, out of the box, but it's still resource intensive. Time and effort. Time is revenue, especially uh, if you're having a, a multi V center environment, it's now there's, there's a solution. You, you can, another package that you can purchase a uh, VCD or ARIA, but then you in, introduce complexities, more tools, more, more complexities, um, more training on, on individuals to understand that VCPP requires MSPs more cost and and complex tool sets. Again, increased costs, licenses, commitments, management overhead. No simple cloud experience. Just enable self-service for core resources. So now, that's why we're here today. We want to talk about a solution, a different approach, but maybe you're not familiar with Virtuoso and why we're an ideal partner to partner with you. We're primarily a software company. We've developed software to enable different types of cloud infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and anything as a service based on OpenStack and KVM used by service providers and enterprise across the world, multi-tenant, self-service by design, enabled companies to give secure access to a cloud resource and simply afford an affordable way. So here's some of our customers um, that, that were all over the place. You can see the map here. Since 2018, bringing some simplicity, provisioning, management, and orchestration, and billing to VMware as well. So let's take a look at the solution from a high level. We'll take a look at this. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some customer case studies, and then we'll jump into a, a quick little demo. So if we look at a cloud, platform, the Virtuoso Cloud Platform for VMware or VCP for VMware. We need intuitive UI customer for customers and users. It needs to be simple. Simple allows you for easy adoption and easy management as well. So you need that modern cloud experience. The ability to white label so you can disseminate it down, give, give the look and feel of your company. Localization, if you have multi-tiered across multiple regions, you need that localization. Self-service, okay? So we have the, we have the uh, simplistic user interface. We also need a way for individuals to have self-service. So we provision and, and do automated provisioning and management for users to not only it's intuitive, but it's also simplistic and intuitive and self-service for them, saves times, cost, and reduces errors. Secure multi-tenancy, everything's in security. We need the ability to allow for multiple, but isolation and security is, is, is paramount. So we have a comprehensive row-based control system within this. No user access to the back end. Gives you a front end to the ability for them to simplistically uh, consume resources. Then we need accurate metering and billing. We need to know what's being consumed, who's doing what, who's, who's doing what on, on what environment. And then it's an easy way to deploy. It can be uh, put within your, already within your environment. It's very easy to uh, de deploy this and, and make this uh, make this work. That being said, we're gonna talk a little bit about some customers. We've got two customer cases. Just as an example, this is a uh, first one is an MSP um, 
mid-sized managed service and a managed cloud provider, which offered private cloud based on vCenter. The customers were looking for more, more of a public cloud experience and the MSP own IT team wanted to improve the efficiency by enabling customers to do it for themselves. Let the customers do it. it easier for management. Rather than making their cloud more complex and expensive, they've adopted our, our platform to deliver a public cloud-like self-service experience. And, and now they have much better visibility of usage and they can give customers accurate view of utilization. And of course, they can bill properly too. Secondly, we have a, a large enterprise software company out of, Sil out of Silicon Valley, 250 million in revenue. And they came to us um, with a problem that they needed to manage their environment because they have lots of developers. These developers were accessing the infrastructure and it was causing uh, issues. They also had customers. They wanted a way to separate and isolate and build a contiguous system and solution so that manage the IT can manage the infrastructure efficiently and allow their customers and internal uh, development team to have access to the resources they needed. And so it's not only a multi tenant but it's also a self-service. We will have a full write-up coming soon, probably first of the year on this, on these, on this customer. So now let me jump into the demo. So let me uh, switch over here really quick. Let me change the share here on the screen to the proper screen here. So as we look at as we look at this as we look at this environment, this is the logging. And now when we look at it, this is a simple user interface, um, cloud metrics and really admin and settings area. I am logged in as the global admin. And so I can see all the, all the activities that are happening within the environment. First and foremost, we, what we wanna do is set up the environment. We wanna wire it together. Now, some of this is already pre-wired, but we wanna wire it together so that we can show that we can connect to the resources and then build an environment so that a customer can log in and we can do that all pretty simplistically within this environment. We're gonna go over to the settings and first and foremost, we are gonna look at the, the vCenter. Now, it has been imported in, um, all the resources that are tied to this vCenter. It comes in here with all the information. Uh, one thing to note here, as you connect to it, it actually brings all these resources into the environment because uh, if we set this up so that it can bring it in so that now we can utilize this uh, vCenter. And this can happen to uh, multiple vCenters. Next, we have to go in and we have to create a compute zone. And that zone and can be, I've got a couple zones, but in this case, I'm gonna use a single cluster. These zones are used to uh, assigned uh, to compute resources and zones you can zone it out based on virtual centers or multiple regions as well. So if we look at that, it's just a simplistic aspect of what's in here. Uh, we give, it brings in the total uh, amount of resources for this and then anything that's related to uh, that, that compute zone. Next, we have to do compute resources. We can carve up resources. We can be very detailed in our resources in how we are going to uh, utilize uh, this resource. Again, this is all one contiguous, so it's everything is the same, but they can be separated. There are a few actions we can do. Um, we can actually import 
uh, virtual machines that are resident on there. So if you had an existing vCenter, you could bring those virtual machines in and, and move them into this specific compute resource that we could assign to a customer. So you could transition from your current environment to this as well. After we have a compute resource, which, which I do have, we have to go over to and make sure that we have the templates and the elements that we're going to uh, consume within this environment. So you can see here, there's different templates. The ones, the two specific that we're going to look at is the vCenter. Um, and if you remember back in the import was a 2019, it brought this in for, for this environment. We could also bring in an OVA and assign it to this vCenter. That vCenter is our, our compute resources, and so we can bring one in. So I'm bringing both of those in to show how we are going to utilize this. Now we have the, the vCenter. We have the compute resources. Also with that import and everything bring coming in came the, da the data, data stores and also the networks. Those came in. Um, we could get it granular on those, but just as a global, we're going to go ahead and use those. Now we go over, and this is where, where the power of this comes from, from a perspective of how we can carve up this even more in and how we give access to users. We use what are called buckets, and those buckets have various resources that are that are assigned to those individuals. Let me go back over here to buckets. So we have buckets here. Inside of the buckets are, if we were to look at a cloned bucket here, we have virtualization. We have limitations that we put on here. Uh, I don't have any limitations, but you can limit compute zones down to, you can narrow it down to specific customers, disk size, everything's max here. So you can think through how you wanna, you can do throttling of, of, of throughput, um, certain IP addresses, disk size, what templates do I have access to? One thing to note is here is instant packages. And we will see this when we create a user and create a virtual machine. These are ways in which we can do predefined or templates or resources that are going to be used within the environment so that a user can quickly just pick a, pick a type of VM and a size and it goes and, and, and provisions that uh, for them. So we're gonna go ahead and, and we'll just use that cloned one there. Um, if you noticed, if we go back over to the buckets, um, various um, currencies, you can se select the currencies. And then within the, um, we have a rate card. Um, rate card is how you basically bill uh, in the bulk of the billing mechanism for the consumed resources down to a base price to per gigabyte per hour and it can be very granular in, in how you set up this for specific customers um, because they have access to uh, these buckets. So now let's go ahead and go, go ahead and go into a user. Yeah. Just refresh that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a user really quick. Required for an email, time zone, language, here's, here's what we have issued. We can issue more. Give this user a password. 
while Mike is doing that, and if you guys have any questions, uh, you can use uh, raise your hand, ask it verbally, or use the chat right. to uh, flow the questions to us as we uh, continue. You can do user groups or roles. Roles are very granular. We'll, we'll show a little quick slide on that, but I will use the VM user. The, I pick my bucket. I'm gonna use the cloned bucket because that's the one I'm uh, going to use. We're gonna go ahead and, and you can suspend, you can do various things for that user and um, be able to give them certain access for a certain period of time. And Mike, okay. while you add that, uh, we have a question from Eric. He's asking about uh, if we can connect, um, if we connect through uh, NAD, um, Okta and other ones um, with that. Yes, uh, I can get you the details on the various ones. Not all of those, but um, most of them are the open ID ones. So enter ID, Okta, um, are through this, in fact, I have another environment that's actually using Okta, so yes. Thank you. So, so this is the user that's created. Um, I am still the global admin. There's a really nice feature here. Um, I can go to the users. We will just provision a real quick machine here, maybe. Mike, if I can bother you with, um, with another question, uh, Mohammed is asking if we can also do network segmentation at the same time. It brings in, let's see, what, what does he say? Can we provide network segmentation? Yes, you can. You build, you build it in your, your resources within the VMware, and that'll come up, and you can actually segment in here with VLANs and whatnot. And a follow-up question from Daniel. If we have a VMware cluster, can we import uh, into ONAP the existing VMs, or do we have yes. to create a new cluster? Yes, you can. You can import it. Um, I that one section in there that I clicked. It says import virtual machines. Once the the vCenter is tied to this, it'll bring them in. Perfect. So we have a web user that I created, and I'm going to actually log in as that user. Maybe. <laughs> Try it one more time here. This is a hosted environment here. So now I'm in as that web user. Notice things have changed. There's nothing here. I don't have any virtual servers. I don't have resource pools. However, I can add a virtual machine. So part of this is it's going to go out and look at my templates that I've allocated, both OVA and Windows. And I wanna show you the Windows one because there's license in here and I can turn on MAK, MS, or your own license and they can pick it and bring that in here. Notice they're part of the price book. They can actually see elements that are there from a pricing perspective. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to call this a win 2019 and we'll just call it the same. I'll leave it at Hawaii. Give up my super secret password. We will go next. Okay. So Couple things here. This is, I think, is 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 very nice from a from a service provider. I can build these T-shirt size, predefined. I don't have to go into details. I can pick it. Now, notice the they go red because I've pre-allocated resources on my template that I can only allow for this. Now you can you can differentiate that on here and actually say if it's Windows, do this, this, and this because these are instant packs, or if it's Linux, do this, this, and this. This just would illustrate how, how that would go about. Or you can give them the ability to pick the resources, and this would be critical in how you restrict some of your resources or allow them to do whatever um, within this environment. So they have the flexibility to be very simple, 
or they can be a little more, hey, I need a little more powerful machine. You know, I'm willing to pay for it and, and do what, what I need to do. So we're just gonna go ahead and select that. Then you can pick add-ons. Um, in the Linux one, there's actually a, an automated um, elements that uh, uh, that can be done or and, and a pre-done uh, run. You can actually have recipes to install post configuration installation. Um, those can be put in here as well as a, as a script. Um, I'm not going to have a recipe here. And we're going to just go next, and that is it. It's going to build the server. It'll take a little bit, and then it'll it'll go ahead and boot. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. You'll see it's there. It's going through, and now it's actually provisioning the server. Okay. And while we're waiting, uh, there were a few other questions that came uh, through. Um, as far as... Um... Do we have to import the entire vCenter um, environment or we can do it for specific VMs, specific pools? Specific it will cluster? be the entire VMware, VMware environment. The entire VM. Okay, so there's no granularity that we can offer. Uh, as far as two-factor authentication, um, what uh, what methods do we support in the portal? I will let me get with you on that because there's been a change in the, in the newer version um, and, and it's it's... I'll, let me get to the details on that. And uh, one other question is as far as billing. Do we interact with the external billing system? Does it have its own billing? Does it work with uh, Microsoft licensing? It is an it is an aggregator. Um, it is API driven. Um, we work with um, various, let me share my screen here as we come up here to the end of the slide here. Um, we, we have an integration with a, a few billing. Um, one comes to mind is WHMCS. That's the most popular one. Um, but where you mentioned will... API driven, so one can hook it to Correct. their- You can tie it to various, depending on the API calls uh, um, and, and whatnot, you can tie it to third party, your third party billing. And as far as the self-service portal for external internal customers, so one administrator can extend that to external internal customers or segment the system so other uh, than the administrator, uh, customers can access the system. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, and so this, that leads into this, because the demos, now there's a couple things that we're gonna cover here. Um, governance, cloud governance is huge, which is really wrapped around security. The role-based access locks down features, templates, resources. Um, case in point, um, you might have an administrator who needs full access, but a junior administrator just needs control, but you also may, might need the billing individual just to have access to billing and, and nothing else. So you create a role that is specific to the customer right. and that will uh, segment what they can access. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, there are, I believe there's like 52 pages of roles or access elements that it's very granular, super granular. So you can create custom role that is specific Correct. to the customer needs. Yeah, for um, tenants or even groups. If you have an admin group for a tenant, you build a group and then that role, you build that role for that group because it might be multiple people instead of individually. Okay. One other question that we have is about uh, creating VLANs to control traffic through uh, security groups. Are there, yes. is there segmentation through VLANs? Correct. Yes, there are. And uh, the last question that we have is uh, from Muhammad is in regards to currencies. So we can assume that if you, that the gating factor or the limitation will be your billing system, not necessarily um, VCP. Correct. And guys, you can also use the raise hand. We can give you, if you wanna do verbal communication, if you wanna actually ask questions live, we can do that as well. So feel free. So let's just um, get to the, we'll just get to the questions. There was a couple items that we've already covered, licensing and whatnot. Uh, before we get into the question and answers, there's a, probably one question is, how does this, how does this work? How do we deploy? Um, we can, uh, it's a simple OVA installation on a dedicated server. Um, you can do a bare metal server if you want. Um, license per VM managed, by platform, 
We have 24 hours, 24 seven support. Um, we can connect after we can do a hosted on premise or a hosted proof of concept. Um, it's, it's not built for performance. It's built for functionality. So you can test it, um, preferably on prem, uh, simple OVA install. So you can see how it works in your environment. Those are, yeah. and those it's, are um, just to mention, this can be used for your environment, or it can be extended to customers that have their own, uh, VMware stack to install on their own environment. So you can resell the licenses to customer of yours, or you can use it internally. Um, your choice. So we have, we've had a lot of questions in here. We probably will have more, but I want to, you know, Ronnie, you can uh, kind of talk here real quickly and then we can kind of look at uh, some more questions and then uh, wrap it up here. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised we didn't get uh, pricing questions. So we do <laughs> have, uh, we do have answers for that. If you guys interested in knowing the prices in, interested that we have a promotion that is actually going for this webinar or for the, before the end of the year. Um, any, any questions, any concerns about pricing? Uh, we got another question while we wait for price. Does the question. solution support multi-tenancy? Yes. Okay. So the answer is this. Let me share my screen for a second and I'll show kind of the pricing uh, and what promotions we offer for this uh, product. Uh, you guys can see my Excel here. Let me just make it uh, a little bit uh, bigger. So this is, uh, we just took a case of 100 units, 100 uh, CPU cores. Um, so our calculation is per the peak usage of CPU cores in a month, uh, minus 10%. Uh, and you can see our pricing goes by tiers. So we have uh, all the way from $500 per month, minimum monthly commitment, all the way to 8,000 and custom, if if you have more demand than $8,000 a month, of course, we can have uh, custom pricing. Uh, so those are the pricing per uh, VM. And the, the webinar pricing is actually offering a 15% discount, 10, 15, 10 for the $500 a month um, tier. If it's 1,000 and above, it's 15% discount. If you looking to buy it ahead of time, 12 months uh, prepayment, we can actually offer 25% uh, discount on that. So we are open for business. Just let us know what you need and uh, we'll be more than happy to facilitate. Okay. Any other questions? So we have a... Um, Mike, we have another question. Um, we can import, of course, a whole environment, but we have do we have the ability to have internal fencing for VMs? Specific VMs, yes. Pools and clusters that will come in and you can select those to be utilized if need be. Okay. Uh, is the portal hardened or else needs to be uh, planned in the terms of security? So reverse proxy, white uh, whitelisting, and so on. Great question. Um, in fact, that um, part of the reason why we were chosen um, for that that large Silicon Valley was part of it was security, very secure, um, and granularity. All right. And Mohammed is asking if we can get a, a trial for the uh, product. Yes, you can get a trial part of the POC. We can uh, show you how it works in your environment and uh, see if it works for you, and then continue from there. Uh, another question that we have is, does it support three-tier setup, SAN, compute, networking? It, it does, it does. That's from storage perspective. I am <laughs> thinking through the, the connectivity. Um, that, is an, that is an external, but it's very specific, but I will get you the details on that. We'll, let's get that noted and, and we can get those details of, because there's very specific elements on that. Uh, one question, another question from Muhammad is, uh, can we handle uh, high availability and load balancing through this portal on the uh, uh, VMware environment? Load balancing would come through your uh, vCenter v and that, that's what's taking care of it. Okay.
Guys, any more questions? Okay. If no more questions, be feel free to reach out to us. Uh, there's the info at virtuoso.com. You can reach out directly to me, to Mike. We'll be more than happy to provide um, uh, POCs, to provide quotes if need to, and to take it forward um, with your needs. Uh, just a second, we're getting more questions. Ooh, <laughs> a slew of more questions. Um, so, Muhammad is actually asking a, a little bit more pointed question. I mean, the load balancing for this tool. Is there load balancing for the tool itself, Mike? No. Okay. Okay. Um, can we assign RBAC to specific user group within the uh, Entra or um, Active Directory? I have to see how those are imported, but uh, as far as the role based uh, might be tied to a group um, from that, depending on the, um, the that access, that remote access or the authenticated access. Okay. And Daniel, I see that you asked a question. I'm not sure what is the question. Can you re reiterate or ask it verbally? Daniel Reiter? He's, I think he's saying vCloud Director and on app different. Yes, they're, it is, is different. There's a, there's a deprecated uh, piece to on app of the vCloud Director piece. Um, this is the, if, if they want that tied to it, um, the older versions did do vCloud Director, but that's been deprecated and not going forward. Well, thank you guys for joining. Um, again, reach out to us if you have more questions or you need to, you want to progress. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, those um, promotions that we have are uh, good for the webinar. Just mentioned that you were in the webinar and we can extend those promotions to you. Or if you want to get the 25% discount, uh, just reach out to us before the end of the year so we can uh, facilitate.